Hello, my name is Jonathan Looney. I'm a network architect in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. Today, I am going to demonstrate nonstop bridging on EX series switches. This is an important and useful feature which can make failovers occur seamlessly. EX8200 switches provide redundancy through redundant routing engines, while EX4200 switches provide redundancy by having redundant routing engines in a virtual chassis configuration. By itself, this redundancy is valuable because it can allow you to quickly recover from a failure of the primary routing engine. However, there is still a brief outage while the backup routing engine begins processing all the protocols, such as spanning tree and LACP, and begins forwarding traffic. Nonstop bridging makes routing engine redundancy even better by eliminating this failover time. When you enable nonstop bridging, the routing engines synchronize the state of supported protocols so the backup routing engine can immediately take over for the master when the master fails. To enable nonstop bridging, you need to configure three things. First, you configure graceful routing engine switchover. Next, you configure configuration synchronization. Finally, you configure nonstop bridging. Let me demonstrate this for you using the topology you see on the screen. This is a very simple topology. There are two EX4200 switches connected in a virtual chassis. FPC0 is the master RE, and FPC1 is the backup RE. There are two hosts connected to the same VLAN on the virtual chassis. Both are connected with multiple interfaces, which form an aggregated Ethernet bundle. Both bundles are managed by the Link Aggregation Control Protocol, or LACP. Finally, the EX4200s are running the Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol on both aggregated Ethernet interfaces. First, let me ping host B from host A. This will let us see how quickly the routing engine failover occurs. At the moment, nonstop bridging is not enabled. Now I will initiate a routing engine failover, and we can see how quickly the failover occurs. You can see that traffic has momentarily stopped passing between host A and host B. At this point, the backup routing engine, which, which is now the master, is restarting its layer 2 protocols and recreating the forwarding table. Traffic is again passing between host A and host B. From the ping output, it appears there was approximately a 25 second outage during the failover. Next, I will enable nonstop bridging. First, I will configure graceful routing engine switchover. Next, I will configure configuration synchronization. Finally, I will configure nonstop bridging. Now let me again ping host B from host A so we can see if there's any packet loss during the failover. Now I will initiate a routing engine failover. As you can see, there was no packet loss during the failover. Here you can see the routing engine is running layer 2 protocols just as you'd expect.
Nonstop bridging doesn't support all protocols on all platforms. For example, nonstop bridging support for LACP was just added to the EX4200 platform in Junos 11.4. So you will want to check the product documentation to see which software version supports the features you want on the hardware models that you use. Also, even though we have only demonstrated this on EX series switches, nonstop bridging is also supported on MX series 3D universal edge routers. You'll want to check the product documentation for that as well. Information about nonstop bridging is found in the high availability section of the product documentation. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demonstration of nonstop bridging. Juniper Learning Bytes. View more at www.juniper.net slash learningbytes. They have free, concise lessons on specific subjects, relevant for all skill levels, taught by training experts, and available whenever and wherever you're ready to learn. Juniper Learning Bytes. Expand your knowledge bit by bit.